5 G-Shock squares and 5 different levels of quality against 5 different price ranges. Starting from $70 ending up with... $4,000? So this is what we're going to compare today, a super wide range of a unique design that was never been replicated by a brand before. The Casio Origin or the Square as we know it is a super iconic digital watch with a heritage of over 35 years. The first G-Shock was launched in 1983 by Kikuo eBay for the same purpose as we understand it today, a shock resistant watch with good accuracy and features at a reasonable price for any pocket. But we will see as the mission of the square changed over time. The brand upgrades the square's modules from one generation to another, increasing ultimately the price. So which model will offer the best value for the money asked? Well, we shall see. For that, you have to stick with me until the end. And the subscribe would do even better. Thank you. Our journey starts with the DW5600E, the base model of the square line. This is the most representative square watch which offers besides toughness an appealing price for so many years. The series 5600 was launched in 1987 and since then it was upgraded only once with the addition of the backlight feature. As an identifier the dial layout is a bit different than the iconic DW5000C. The first ever G-Shock launch had the shock resist and the Casio logo on the top left corner where this model has the Casio logo top centered and the logo of the shock resist on the bottom center, lacking as well the famous brick pattern. And as features, this model offers a digital chronograph equipped with the module 1545, which offers the following features. Stopwatch timer, alarm and hourly time signal, plus flash alert, has a blue backlight which is kind of bright for the price range and the accuracy of the model offers plus minus 15 seconds per month has a mineral glass display, a resin outer case and as well as the less comfortable strap, weighs 79 grams and offers 200 meters wire resistance. For this video this model was equipped with the composite bracelet which makes the square way more interesting and way more comfortable. So if you want to reignite the love for the G-Shock squares, try the composite bracelet, I think it totally improves the watch visually but also from the wearability perspective. This is basically a plastic bracelet with decorated links and a metallic clasp super lightweight which works with the majority of the entry level squares. And everything described comes with the price tag between $40 and $90 as a standard package without the composite bracelet which is more expensive than the watch. Now moving to the next tier of $300, let's see what we'll receive for this price point compared to the $70 version. Here we are looking as well at an iconic design, the DW5000 which was for many many years considered the premium square G-Shock. This model was pretty much loved by the enthusiast because of its new features and the fresh look and because it has a metallic core. The case design is almost one to one with slight better finishings of the resin case which feels more matted. As dial design the 5000 series keeps the same dial layout with the Casio logo at 12 o'clock and the shock resist label at 6 o'clock as the 5600 series. But the color scheme is more sober, stealthy I would reckon with a carbon pattern on the sides with grey and white labels and a small red accent on the bottom area. This model basically offers the same functions but comes with a newer module, the 3495 quads, that offers solar power battery and radio control which allows the watch to sync, improve and maintain accuracy over time and weights 103 grams because of the metallic core. So this model clearly represents an improvement from the 5600 series with a better design, slightly more refined but 5 times more expensive. Now moving to a higher tier at $500 and we are looking at the GMWB 5000D or <laughs> what's left of it. And no, it's not the same model used for durability tests from the G-Shock promo, it was just worn with passion. This is a full metal version released at the 35th anniversary in 2018 as an evolution for the successful GW5000 series with improved specs and metallic or titanium cases. And with this launch, the brand reintroduces the original design with the bricks pattern on a grayscale palette, matching the stainless steel case appearance but also by adding a flat bezel surface, unlike the iconic ones which had embossed areas to host the G-Shock and the protection labels. So the design changes once with this $500 tier. The pushers are bigger now, also the top and the bottom screws exceed the case design. Here is not that noticeable but on the next two versions we will see they are pretty visible. 
and its features and differences from the previous model, we have an updated 3459 quartz module, which features an advanced Bluetooth connected capability with tough solar and multiband 6 and a high contrast STN LCD display. And you can see how the display is refreshing because of the camera frame rate frequency, alien stuff. So yeah, as I said, the wow factor here is the fact that you have the ability to connect a square with a smartphone and adjust the settings in only one sync, refresh and that's it. And the accuracy seems to be the same declared by the brand, plus minus 15 seconds per month, but with no signal calibration or the mobile link function. And as other features, has a mineral crystal as well and weights 155 grams, being priced at $500. Now as wearability, I personally appreciate the features and the design offered for this version, however the weight of it of 155 grams simply puts me away from this model. A weighty watch needs to have substance or metallic elements inside to form a mechanism for the weight to be justified. Where here basically we have a quartz module which is super lightweight, so a severe contradiction in my mind. Now switching totally the appearance, the feeling and the price range, we are going higher at $2,000. And we are looking at the highest tier of the G-Shock line, precisely at the GMW B5000 in titanium. This model has a different appearance with a full matted DLC coating and interesting polished accents on the bezel and on the bracelet joints. This is an under the radar version in my opinion because it does not scream expensive from the distance. You have to analyze it properly and to preview the beautiful details and finishings provided by the brand. The design of the dial is inspired from the original 1983 DW5000C1B, which contains the brick patterns with the same discrete gold accents matching the tone of the bezel text, but also the top button screws and the pushers. And I mentioned previously the gold painted pushers are bigger increasing the accessibility but also the top and the bottom screws that hold the case are thicker exceeding the case profile which narrows towards the bracelet. And this is a cool accent in my opinion that works very well with the design language of the case. And as features this one is equipped with the same module the 3459 quartz with the same bluetooth connected module with tough solar and multiband 6 and a higher contrast STN LCD display which is visible now through a sapphire crystal instead of the regular mineral glass. And as wearing experience this titanium square weights 98 grams which makes it the second lightweight watch out of these 5 models. However, from my perspective, although this watch is supposed to be tough because of the DLC coating, there are huge question marks in regard to the durability and the scratch resistant surface. I mean, there are already a few dings and uncovered areas, which sends the message to my brain that this is not quite an adventurer's watch, more like a desk watch. And now moving to the square of squares. This is the MRGB 5000B, a luxurious G-Shock priced around $4000, which is approximately 57 times more expensive than the base model. And if the design and the concept are similar to the budget square, this is a totally different beast, where the brand combine innovation with rare materials and finishings to develop this iconic square. And a thing to know, this model is part of the MRG series, which is some sort of a Grand Seiko line if we relate it to Seiko. And for this reason, this watch connects with a MRG mobile application, not with a regular one for G-Shocks connected. The square platform is redesigned from scratch, made from multiple components. The case and the bezel are made from a super durable titanium 64 alloy. And the band is made of a DAT55G titanium alloy, which is approximately 3 times harder than the pure titanium and provides excellent workability. The top of the bezel is made using a cobalt alloy, cobarion, which is approximately 4 times harder than the pure titanium and has the same brilliance as platinum. The dial is as well equipped with a sapphire crystal and underneath we can preview the flashy design consisting in the brick pattern and the red line that surrounds the digital display. And then we have the strong gold accents of the MRG logo and the shock resist icon, which relate chromatically with the labels that surround the display but also with the pushers and the case screws as well exceeding the line of the ends of the lugs. As specifications, this model is equipped with a 3501 MRG module with gold-plated circuit retainer plates to reduce the electrical resistance. And as wearability, clearly this one ensures a superior experience. It is super lightweight having 100 grams, offering an all-polished appearance combined with red and gold-plated accents. 
So on the wrist, this square stands out from the crowd. You can immediately spot the difference in quality and price tag without a doubt. And also in terms of dial clarity and backlight responsiveness, we can see an improvement on the light and the way it fades in and fades out based on the model features and the price range. The standard $70 has a strong blue backlight, but the rest of the models have white light. The $300 model has a decent intensity without a clear transition from fade in fade out. The $500 model has already an improved fade in and out transition and then the $2000 model has a smoother transition with the same intensity. And le creme de la creme, the MRG offers the superior fade in fade out transition which is very smooth and natural. Now the question is, no matter the financial status, is it worth spending $4000 on an iconic affordable design? Because at the end of the day this is what it represents. The design language of G-Shock Origins which was associated for so long with durability, reliability and affordability. And I think the answer is yes, the swag is real and instead of buying an automatic watch with a heritage brand on the dial, you can buy one of the best creations that G-Shock ever made, especially if you're a Square Design fanboy. So shout out to Razvan who helped me to document and send me these watches for review, you are amazing bro, as usual. And in terms of great value received for the money paid, although I dislike the weight of the $500 version, I think this one offers the best features and quality for the money asked, especially that Black Friday and holidays are coming up, and this model might be bought for less than $350. And to keep it short, I'm really curious to know what is your favorite G-Shock line and for what price range? Please let me know in the comments section. And as usual, if you're new here, please consider subscribing for future episodes. Thank you very much, thanks for watching and until next time, be brave, stay safe.